Good morning. It's Thursday morning, March 26th, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church, and I'm glad you've decided to join me for morning prayers today. If this is your first time, you can relax because I do most of the work. You'll hear a psalm and a gospel lesson and a little commentary on each. Then we'll lift up the prayers from the Presbyterian Daily Prayers for Thursday. We'll include some petitions from our congregation members, and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. I'll give a final blessing, and that will be our morning prayers. It should take between 12 and 14 minutes. Let us be called together with some words from Scripture. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy never cease, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. We're continuing on today in Psalm 147. We'll finish the psalm by reading verses 12 through 20. Remember, this is a psalm that was written to provoke singing among people. It's a song of praise, and last week we were praising God for many different aspects. But today the focus is on the wonders of creation, and yet these creation wonders pale in comparison to God's greatest gift to Israel. Listen for that gift. It's the last thing you'll hear. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For God strengthens the bars of your gates. God blesses your children within you. God grants peace within your borders. God fills you with the finest of wheat. God sends out a command to the earth. God's word runs swiftly. God gives snow like, the, like wool. God scatters frost like ashes. God hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? God sends out his word and melts them. God makes the, the wind to blow and the waters flow. God declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. God has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know God's ordinances. Praise the Lord. Israel, as every nation, had awe and respect for the Creator God. But there was something greater than creation that inspired the people of Israel. And that was, by divine revelation, they also knew the law of God. Because they had the law, Israel was able to live before God in confidence and joy, and that made all the difference. Knowing God's love meant living in a godly way. Now let's turn to the Gospel, the Gospel of Mark. We're going to continue and conclude the 8th chapter by picking up at the 27th verse and going through the first verse of chapter 9. Jesus and his disciples are traveling, as is often the case, and Jesus asks them the most important question any Christian must answer. Who do you say that I am? Listen for particularly the disciples' answers and Jesus' response in teaching. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And they answered him, 
John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But he asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, You are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo many great sufferings and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, but Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And then he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God has come with power. This is the word of the Lord. God is always faithful to the reading and the hearing and the doing of the word. So here's the summary of Jesus' teaching. Deny yourself. No more me first. Take up your cross. Walk the path of Jesus and follow, and if you do so, you will be where Jesus is. The way of Jesus is love, and love begins when we loosen our grip and open ourselves to others and discover in our loving and sharing and mutual suffering that Jesus was there with us all along. But now it's time to say our prayers. The prayers for Thursday again take us through certain petitions and then around the world to pray for those who are busy in the life of the church on another continent. Let us pray. Loving God, as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially today, we thank you for the community of faith in our church, for those with whom we work and share common concerns, for the beautiful diversity of your children, for the many indications of your love at work in the world. And particularly today, we pray for those who work for reconciliation and wholeness. Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal victory over all that would destroy or harm. And you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for families suffering separation, for people different from ourselves, for those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow or mourning, for victims of violence or warfare. 
Today we lift up to you the church in the Pacific region. Let us remember in our prayers that in these exceptional times, there are many ordinary blessings. There are birthdays and anniversaries. There's kindness and caring. There's washing the dishes and cleaning the garage. Even in the midst of crisis, let us give thanks for such blessings. And let us pray for all medical workers, all first responders, all governing officials, all who staff essential services, all who are sacrificing that others receive needed care and attention. Give to each grace sufficient for today and rest sufficient at day's end. We remember all who are ill, in hospital, at home, awaiting tests, or recovering. Especially we pray for Richard in Idaho, for Decky's son Victor in Oklahoma, for Esther, for Raina's sister Raquel, for Eliphaz at home, for Rudy in hospice, for all in nursing homes bereft of family visitors, and all we hold close in our hearts. Send healing, send peace, send courage. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To God be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the people say amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say the Lord's name be praised. And now, my friends, until we meet again, I hope that today holds a special blessing for you because I am quite sure that God has destined you to bless someone else today. Go in peace. <laughs>